name is Quincy, I'm 17 and I am autistic and I'm from Colorado in the USA and I am interested in biological sciences and looking to pursue a career in entomology and the best part about having autism is being able to, uh, to look at stuff from a different perspective and figure out solutions to problems that nobody else saw because being the same is boring. Syndrome, I'm not that familiar with it and I think most of the people aren't so if you don't mind, what impact does the syndrome have on the way you think? Um, it has very, very much impact. Um, because if I wouldn't have had this diagnosis, then I would have been like everyone else. And I had just continued like everyone else, not noticing something was wrong. wrong. And, but now I... I am di different, I think different, I work differently, and... Do you understand differently as well? Some things, I... Some people say that, oh, climate change is so important, and, and yet they just carry on like before. And I, I don't understand how you can have such double standards. Mm -hmm. um, if I... If I think something is important, then I I spend 100% of my energy on that, and I can't do that at the same time as I am doing the opposite, as people do today. Hi, my name is Grace, I'm 16 years old, and I have high-functioning autism, ataxic cerebral palsy, and also a moderate hearing loss. I'm very passionate about the film and also media industry alongside modelling because it allows me to represent my disabilities and just to get them out there and raise awareness. Our disabilities do not and will not define us, in fact, they make us stronger. So thank you for watching and good luck. My name is Jack and I live in Melbourne, Australia and I have ADHD. When I grow up, I want to be a spokesperson for all people for like ADHD campaigns. Five, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And it was really weird having a different mind to everyone else. I found it really hard to concentrate because of some of the symptoms, like fidgeting and problems paying attention. I thought having ADHD would be the weirdest thing. I mean, I have a different brain. It thinks in a different way to someone else. What? And I found out that other people, and not just any other people, but smart, famous people had ADHD. Justin Timberlake, the American actor-singer. Justin Levine, the singer in Maroon 5 and Jim Carrey, the hilarious actor. And so many more amazing people that have changed this world for the better. And it was then that I realized that having ADHD wasn't that bad. In fact, it's the best thing, it makes me feel like, feel like I'm the best person in the universe, in the most important universe. But you might be thinking, Jack, why are you so like happy that you're different from people? Well, it's like my personality my sense of humour and my creativity is different from everyone, as are everyone. So, people always beat themselves up about how they might be different. If you're autistic, if you have dyslexia, if you have dyspraxia, no, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, this friend also has dyslexia. But, no. It still makes us incredibly diverse, as are everyone in this world. We're all diverse from each other. And instead of beating ourselves up about this, we should be celebrating how diverse we are. Like, if you have ADHD, you have autism, whatever you have. If you have dysgraphia, if you have cerebral palsy, you're, we're all different. Everyone in this world is different. It's just we have to work harder. We are, we have to work harder than other people. Other people have it easy. We have to work for ours. And when we actually do it, we have the best results. So. If you, someone ever tells you that, well, you should feel bad because you feel different mentally, physically, emotionally, or any way you feel different, don't beat yourself up about, about that. Don't beat yourself up about that. Celebrate that. So, let me finish what, I've, what I said when I came here. My name is Jack. I have ADHD. I'm not afraid to tell people that I have ADHD.
Hi, happy Neurodiversity Celebration Week. I'm Sarah Rankin and I am a professor in the Faculty of Medicine here at Imperial College in London. My research is looking at drugs that can help the body to repair faster. So for example, developing drugs that can help once you fracture a bone, they can make it heal faster. So I am dyslexic and dyspraxic. Um, that means that I'm a bit of a slow reader, my spelling is not great and um, I'm a bit clumsy and disorganised and messy. However, <laughs> all that aside, on the plus, my strengths are that I'm incredibly um, creative and innovative and an excellent problem solver and this is what makes me a good scientist. Um, so just want to wish you all the best for this week and if you are neurodiverse please think about becoming a scientist because we need real sort of people that can think in different ways and are creative thinkers. Hi, my name is Helen Needham and I'm a management consultant in financial services. My job is to go into the banks and help them with business transformation programs whether it's helping to develop and inform a strategy on how to do things differently or implementing change. I'm also autistic. For a long time, I thought I was difficult. And after my diagnosis, I realized I'm not difficult. I'm different. And there's a value in my difference. I'm a big picture thinker. I'm logical. I'm trustworthy. I'm loyal. And I'm disruptive. And this leads to innovation, to things that I think are critical for me to be able to do my job. Hi, I'm Graham Simpson. I'm the author of the Rosie Project series featuring an autistic protagonist. So let me give you a quick reading to give you a flavour of those books. Autism isn't a fault, it's a variant. It's potentially a major advantage. Autism is associated with organisation, focus, innovative thinking, and rational detachment. Or from the last book, The Rosy Result, I was a scientist. I was autistic. These were my key strengths. But before I was an author, I ran a business, Stereotype Alert, in the information technology industry. And when you run a business, what you're looking for in employees is people who are very good at what they do and good at solving problems. So when we start talking about diversity, that's often brought in in the context of solving problems. So let's bring in more women, let's bring in people from different cultures because they'll bring a different perspective to where we're going, to the problems we have to solve. But autism should be at the top of that list because that's really about a whole different way of thinking. That's great. So autistic people, speaking as an employer, can add spice, if you like, to the mix. But it's not just about spice. If you look back in history, some of the greatest innovation, some of the greatest work in science and technology, in business, even the arts, were almost certainly um, produced by people who today we would recognise as autistic. We don't have those diagnoses, but Mozart, um, Einstein, Newton, People would say today, maybe Bill Gates, is, is he autistic? The great thing here, of course, is that they're associating autism with great achievements. And I think if I was looking at uh, the characteristic of autism that, um, that I would look the most for as an employer, sure, autistic people are often very articulate, they're often very rational in solving problems, but the thing that is number one for me, and I think has been number one in many of those successes, is what back in the day my school teachers might have called obsession or special interests but as an employer I would call focus, passion, expertise and I think people on the autism spectrum are particularly well suited to bring those to the, to the, um, to the workplace and I would like to think become the role models for autistic people of tomorrow. Thanks. Hi, I'm Quinn and I'm 48 years of age. I've known I was autistic since I was a teenager. What I love about being autistic is the objectivity it gives me. My integrity, 
my honesty, my loyalty, my strong ethical principles. I don't regard myself as a person with autism. I do regard myself as autistic. But I'm not just autistic. Because every day can be an autistomatic day. Hi, I'm Cathy. I am based in London in the United Kingdom and I have dyspraxia. I'm an actor for my job, which is brilliant and I love it. I do think that the two things kind of go hand in hand together almost. Um, I find that although I sometimes have difficulty expressing what I'm feeling uh, with words, when someone gives me a script, I get the emotional journey of the character straight away, almost innately, without much explanation. And also, I'm not frightened to explore. I'm not frightened to make an idiot of myself, which is really, really handy in my job. And also, I have a really weird and wonderful sense of humour. Yeah, it's weird, but people like it. So, also, I'm very creative. I think about things in quite a different way to other people, but I think if everyone on a team is thinking in a different way, surely that's a better team. What I would say is vive la difference. Everybody in the whole world brings something unique and individual with them. And this is part of what makes each of us unique. So let's celebrate it. So Sienna, what does the award mean to you? Um, winning this award is really meaningful to me. It's given me an opportunity to raise awareness for disability-based bullying and to spread my always be kind message. Um, I just want to say that your actions are really important and if you can be kind to the people around you, it can really make a difference. Wow.